Is Imperator Rome in fact making a comeback? And will we get new content for it? Well, check this out. But what does it all mean? A few weeks ago, fans of Imperator Rome came together to show Paradox just how much they love the game, by simply doing the unthinkable, opening up and playing it. People like you and me managed to literally double the player count of this now 5 year old game and people are realizing that it's actually awesome. With the recent player count sticking and even growing, with recent reviews showing an overwhelmingly positive response at 97%. But why am I making such a big deal out of a jump from 600 to 1300 players? Or indeed, 1500 concurrent Roma pilled Paradoxians? Well, I'm wondering whether Paradox will actually pick the game back up, even in a small way, and whether we actually have some proof of it happening. Because there is indeed precedence for resuming development on older strategy titles. Indeed, another Roman strategy game at that. In 2017, after three years of no new expansions since 2014, Total War Rome 2 received the Empire Divided campaign, a massive new expansion that essentially revitalized the game and brought with it a ton of important updates that still make their mark on the overall Rome 2 experience today. The game continued to get meaningful updates for almost another two years, becoming by far the longest supported Total War title. By now, Imperator has been left alone by Paradox for almost exactly three years, making it comparable to the Rome 2 timeline, for whatever that's worth, which is probably nothing to be honest. Now I'm not saying Rome 2 is anything like Imperator or vice versa, but it would be awesome to see Imperator make the same comeback, if only with a skeleton crew that over time added meaningful new mechanics or just polished the game further. It has to be said though, that Imperator's actually seen some tinkering with from the devs already, which can mean good things for the future. Just last year, Imperator received a major bug fixing patch that fixed some very important things, not least of all making it easier for modders to mod the game and implement new stuff of their own. But it also just made the vanilla experience better. The current patch is a beta patch you'll have to opt in to use, but it's easy and done from the Steam menu, so I highly recommend doing so if you're jumping back in. Or for the first time for that matter. Now there have been some speculation on whether this patch was a sort of last Hail Mary for Imperator Rome, especially since the game is officially laid on ice. But a comment from a Paradox community manager on Reddit does at least spark some hope that the game might make a return, as he stated that there was once a comment about the death of the game, but we have only officially shelled the game. We have not stated that we will never return to it. But this patch itself is not the revival of the game. It's about us wanting to give back to you awesome emperors. Don't give up on Rome, Roma Invicta. Now obviously there are no promises here, but this does suggest that at the very least, Paradox is also thinking about Imperator. And to drive that point home, how about we reference the last lead developer on Imperator, Arheo. Yeah, this Giga Chad, who said during the last impromptu Imperator day that he would bring back the game if it reached 100,000 concurrent players. Now obviously this is some kind of sick joke. Imperator didn't even have 100k players on launch, and frankly, no Paradox game has ever had 100,000 concurrent players. The closest thing we have is CK3 with 98,000 players on launch. Actually scratch that, City Skylines 2 managed a crazy 104,000 players on launch, but yeah. In other words, Arheo gave a joke answer here. Well, let's face it, their most popular games like EU4, Stellaris and CK3 are all hovering around mostly between 20 to 30,000 players, with dips and spikes in numbers, and they're still being supported heavily. And we don't talk about Hearts of Iron 4 around here, okay? That game somehow lives its very own special life of line goes ever up. Now compared to these numbers, 1.5k at most for Imperator does seem small. But when you factor in that it's double the number of what it used to be, and the continued show of support from players and YouTubers alike, I don't know, I think we can manage to reach even higher highs than these. In other words, while chances might seem slim, I think Imperator Rome has a fairly decent chance of being picked up again in some fashion at some point. But it's not a given. And in my opinion, I think Imperator's player numbers need to reach at least twice or even three times as much as they have even at their current peak. But this begs the question though. Does Imperator Rome even deserve to reach those player numbers? Does Imperator Rome deserve your time and effort, and the energy it takes to even learn the game? In my opinion, the answer is an unequivocal yes, but you might ask why, since after all, the game's overall review on Steam is now at 61% positive, giving it a mixed verdict, and the game is quote unquote abandoned. Well, let me let you in on something real quick. 
most of Imperator's negative reviews were made in the game's first year of release. And of those reviews, the majority were made in the game's first two months. In other words, at that point in time, the game was bad. At least it wasn't great. It was mixed. And it deserved a mixed verdict throughout 2019 and arguably 2020. But in 2021, Imperator's massive 2.0 update released, revamping most of the game and brought about game-changing designs that made it much more readable and actually fun. And well, after that patch, the game is on a positive streak, culminating in the recent massive boost in upvotes from both old and new players alike who've discovered the game and love it. And why do people love Imperator when they actually play it? Well, as I've tried to convey in the past weeks, Imperator Rome is just a damn good game these days. It takes place in antiquity with the familiar goaded nations like Rome, Carthage, Ptolemaic Egypt, barbarians of all kinds and so on, but offers them on a scale previously unseen. Perhaps the coolest thing about Imperator Rome is that it incorporates something from virtually every other Paradox Grand Strategy game, but becomes its own experience in the process. We have deep government mechanics that varies depending on whether you're playing as a republic or a monarchy. We can enact different laws while simultaneously manage characters. In a deep system, by the way, with actual people making up every part of your empire. We have controllable armies and even navies, with so many options for each one. In fact, Imperator Rome has one of the best army management systems I've ever seen, allowing us to, among other things, automate our legions and tell them to either fight battles or begin sieging enemy cities. And they even get their own legacies and traditions and histories. And like I mentioned, navies are actually needed to transport armies across the seas. We have vital government policies that bring about mighty bonuses for your nation that are also interchangeable. We have diplomacy systems that actually allows you to set a diplomatic stance with wide raging consequences. And importantly, a Victoria style population system where literally every city and province in the world is made up of pops of various classes, religions and cultures, driving your economy and civilization forwards and importantly, allowing for actual city sprawl. Yup, you heard that right, Imperator has city sprawl, meaning that as you play and your cities grow, so too do they visually sprawl and expand across the map. And not in some weird Rome 2 fashion with cities looking positively galactic in size, but in a much more organic and natural way. It's beautiful is what it is, and it even comes with a crucial trade and resource system, where every province with the capacity can trade with both other internal provinces or other kingdoms out in the world, with the various resources providing you both local and faction-wide bonuses. Honestly, this is a genius system, and once you get the hang of it, it really starts to sing, making you desperate for trade and population mechanics like these in other Paradox games as well, like Crusader Kings or EU4, which to be honest feel buried in comparison, at least in these two departments. And that's not even mentioning the fantastic mods for the game, among them Imperator Invictus, which gives the base game a lot of polish and new features, while Terra Indomita expands the world all the way to Japan, giving us perhaps the world's first ancient battle royale, where the Roman Empire can come into contact with the ancient Chinese Empire and whatever else. Oh, but you like Lord of the Rings? Well, there's a deep and dedicated mod for that too, with several years of development in the bag. The same goes for the Bronze Age mod, which offers a deep dive into this truly ancient period, and in such a befitting way for Imperator Rome as well. I've talked about all of this before in my other videos on the game of course, so if you want an even deeper dive into why Imperator is so fantastic, then check those out as well. The question is then, with all of this in mind, whether Imperator will rise from the ashes and be picked up and given another chance to live again. If that happens though, at least one important hurdle has to be conquered, and that is the game's marketing. As Len posted on Twitter, Imperator's marketing was just weird and off-putting. And I have to say that even as a massive Romaboo, Imperator somehow never seemed inviting to me. It never spoke to me on a deep level at all. It felt like the marketing was mostly based on those white statues which were boring, or the admittedly beautiful concept art-like trailer, but still, no true gameplay. If you look up Imperator wallpapers, we still have very little cool promotional art to show for it. And in my opinion, the only good Imperator trailer out there is the one for the 2.0 Marius update, which finally shows off some great gameplay. Like, Imperator offers one of the most beautiful Paradox maps ever made, has amazing artwork, great 3D models, fantastic looking combat and city sprawl. It's so easy to make this stuff look good when it already does. In other words, I think if Imperator were to make a comeback, that Paradox really needs to take a different approach to their trailers, and their marketing in general, really focus on the gameplay aspects, and just make it fun and engaging. I mean, make Imperator roam the next CK2, get campy with it, but make me want to play it. But 
what do you think? Can Imperator Rome make an official comeback? Have you already played the game or begun recently and do you want more? Let me know in the comments and remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, beware the eyes of March and I'll see you next time. Cheers!